escape, Spider. Yeah. Let's get back to the hideout and tell Greer. I guess we lost him. We'd better head back and report the attack to Captain Wallace. Lane? I'll bet you they belong to the Greer gang. No doubt about that, Butch. We received word that Greer was operating in this territory. A bad umbry if I ever saw one. Their hideout must be somewhere as hereabouts. I wonder what's keeping Spider and the boys so long. Yeah, I'll guess with you, Greer. What's keeping them? I'm getting pretty jumpy. Why can't we get busy and pick up that bank money at Dawson that you told us about? That's the biggest haul we've ever gone after. And we can't take it. We have plenty of ammunition and guns. Savvy? Yeah, and don't forget the food. We're running mighty short of that, too. Well, I was hoping the Spider and Clip might run on to something... What's up, men? We ran across a scouting party of soldiers. One of the boys got excited and cracked down on them. We had to make a run for it. Well, you think they know where we are? No, we did them. But we did learn there's a supply train heading for Fort Kearney. Hey, that sounds good. Yeah. They're carrying all the things that we need for that Dawson Bank job. Yeah. You boys ride back. Spot where they camp tonight. All right. Wallace, we surprised a suspicious looking band on the ridge and gave chase, but they got away. I'm gambling it was Greer and his gang, sir. Anyone injured? No, sir. They fired but few shots. We'd better post an outrider. They may try to attack. May I take a detachment, sir, and go after them? No, Sergeant. Our orders from Colonel Hale are to get these supplies and ammunition through as soon as possible. But, Captain, it wouldn't take long and we'd... Sergeant Lane, I'm forced to remind you we have our orders. Sorry, sir. That young Jim Wallace is as proud of being made a captain as some of us old-timers would be if we'd have been elected president. <laughs> you know, hauling supplies to Fort Kearney is a big job in his eyes. But you wait till he tangles with that renegade Greer in his outfit. They told me back in Dawson that Greer had escaped from a prison in Kansas and was on the loose again. He's bad. And I know that bunch we ran into today are Greer men. Mr. Tex Wallace, would you mind telling me why we swing so far to the west if we are headed for Dawson? I uh, certainly not, Rawhide. I figured to go the way of Fort Kearney. Somebody there I'd like to see. I know. It's your cousin Jim. You're always thinking of him. And you just can't wait to congratulate him now that he's been made a captain, can you? Well, you're right, Rawhide. 
I'm plenty proud about him and his army work. You know, we was raised together. Strange how he didn't take up scouting, like you. What, guiding freighters? Finding trails? Freezing to death in winter? Burning up in summer? With an arrow or maybe a bullet for pay? Ah, there's nothing but hardship in our game, Rawhide. In the army, a feller's got a future. Say, look. I wonder whose outfit that is. Hey, that's an army train. Come on. How did you Well, of all people, you, Tex. <laughs> hey, I heard the good news. You're a captain now. Yeah, it's great, eh, Tex? Say, what brings you over on this trail? I was on my way to Fort Kearney to see you. Say hello. Well, thanks, Tex. Yeah, it's funny we'd meet out here. I'm on my first assignment, hauling supplies, guns and ammunition. Say, how's Mom? Well, last time I saw her, she was fine. All she could talk about was you. <laughs> Just waiting for you to be made a captain. <laughs> you know, I promised her when I got my commission, I'd bring her out to the post to be near me. You know, an officer's allowed to have his family there. Yeah, I know. She's waiting just for that. Say, tell me, uh, when do you expect to reach the post? Tomorrow noon. We're camping at Fresh Springs Waterhole tonight. Say, who's that? <laughs> Howdy, Captain Wallace. Howdy, Ron. Howdy, old rascal. Well, I see he's still with you, Tex. Yeah, still with me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you traveling kind of short-handed, Jim. Well, we had to, Tex. Most of them out at the post are out scouting the hills north of here looking for Greer. We heard he was headed for this country. Well, that's right, but uh, you can never tell about this Greer. He's a slick hombre. Ever run into him? No, but I've heard plenty about him. He's a cutthroat if ever there was one. I'll tell you, Jim, we'll ride on into the night camp with you. Then we'll move on. Well, fine. Forward. Ho! Oh. They must be figuring on camping at the Springs tonight. You know that hombre riding in front, don't you? No, who is he? That's Tex Wallace. What of it? What's that mean? It means we lay off of that outfit until he leaves. He's dynamite, and he don't like trail jumpers. We'll let Greer figure that out. Let's get back to him quick. We got that ammunition train spotted. It'll be easy. Parker, get the men ready. Wait a minute. You didn't tell him who's riding with him, Spider. Who? Only that trail buster, Tex Wallace. Only? Tex Wallace? Ain't that enough? I got a score to settle with him. He said, my pal, you call Smith to the pen. And someday I'm gonna tangle with him, but not now. We got bigger things to do. I wouldn't let that worry me. He's not scouting for the army now. He won't be with them long. Hey, you're right, Spider. But well, we can wait. Then when we take him, we'll have everything we need. Guns, ammunition, and food. Come on, let's trail him. Within the year of 83, that A.J. Stephen hired me. He said, young man, I want you to go. Started out to drive those stairs. I stood in my guard through sleet and snow as the herd rode on in the 
to Mexico when I arrived in Mexico. I thought of a gal who loved me, but never a word from her could I hear. So I started back to my once love home in part for the gal I'd call my own. They said, young man, she's wed a richer life. Therefore, wild cowboys, go seek another wife. Oh, buddy, oh, buddy, please sing it home. Don't be forever on the wrong. There's many a guy that I so please don't go where the bullets your gold and your silver too that won't true I'll go out west where the bullets fly I'll stay on the trail till the day I die <laughs> well Jim I <laughs> I guess we'd better get moving. I got a job to move some money on the westbound stage to Carson City for Jim Blake, the banker. He's afraid the Greer gang might get it. <laughs> I wish you weren't going. Well, so do I, but work is work. Well, all right, I guess we'd better get mounted up. I want to thank you, Tex, for coming by to congratulate me. You know, if it hadn't been for you, I never would have made it. Oh, forget it. Forget it, Jim. Say, as soon as you see Mom, tell her to come out as soon as she can, will you? You better will. If I was in your place, Jim, I'd keep a double guard posted tonight. You never can tell when or where this Greer might strike. Thanks, Tex, I will. Well, so long. So long, Captain. <laughs> I'm for going after that gang of cutthroats we met today. Well, what about it? I thought we might ride out and pick up the trail. Think Captain Wallace would let us go? We won't tell him we're going. Oh, we can't do that. We'd be deserters. Nonsense. Captain Wallace has just been made captain. If we bring Greer in, it'll be a real feather in his cap. Well, I see what you mean. Are you with me? What do you say, man? Sure, let's oh, go. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? He's gone. And you'll have plenty of good army ammunition in a little while. Hey, boys, I'll go easy on those shells. I'm only hoping we have enough to get through this job. Come on.
Take the wagon, then head for the rock. Captain Wallace. Greer. We're to blame for this. What should we do? You men had better surrender to the post. But what about you? Butch, you and the men can clear yourself by telling Colonel Hale you were absent on my orders. And place all the blame on you? Nothing doing. We'll tell the truth. It's still desertion in court-martial. You better stick me with it. But they'll court-martial you. If they ever catch me. What are you going to do? Really desert. This time for a good reason. Thanks, Colonel Hale, for sending for me. Are these the men that brought in Jim's body? Yes, Tex. And they came back on their own. All but Lane, the ringleader. We're looking for him. And these men have been court-martialed in the morning. Colonel Hale, I wonder if you could hold off on the court-martial, say, for ten days. What for, Tex? I believe the raid was planned. Lane is no doubt with Greer now. And these men are guilty. Well, in the eyes of military law, yes. But in their hearts, deserters. If you'll give me ten days, I'll try to prove it. All right, I will. What are your plans? The fine Greer. <laughs> I think I got a line on Greer. Is he in town? No, but the blacksmith just told me that he and his men raided the town a few days ago and headed south. I think I know where Lane is, too. Yeah, where's he? The smith had just told me that a stranger came through looking for Greer, too. He answered Lane's description, possibly trying to locate with him. You really think that Lane is after Greer to join up with him? Or even the score. Let's have a bite to eat and head south, see if we can pick up a trail. I want you and Spider to ride into town and hang around. When that stage leaves next week, I want you to be on it. Because we're going to take it at Washoe. Uh, what's up? You know the $30,000 we've been waiting for? They're shipping it out on the Dawson stage. Oh. And in the meantime, while we're waiting, the boys and I will pick up a few odd dollars. But Greer, if we take that stagecoach at Washoe, ain't we getting pretty close to the Army outpost? I'll get rid of them on a phony tip off as to where Greer and he'll be found. Oh, I'll get it. Well, the thing you waited for has happened. What do you mean? Tex Wallace. He's finally catching up with us. Fine. 
But after we hit the stagecoach job, I'm hunting up Mr. Tex Wallace. He won't be trailing us longer. Did you find out anything about Greer? Well, not yet. But if he's in this part of the country, he'll soon turn up. How do you figure that out? I'm going to use that money shipment to Carson as bait. But you hired out to guard that strong box. Ain't you taking a lens? Well, maybe. Yeah, but no one has ever outsmarted that armory yet. You're right, Rawhide. But you stay here till I get back. That's a good Indian gun you got, Charlie. Yeah, me catch him long time. You think we see Indian, huh? No, no, you'll be safe. I'll be very glad. Uh, is this the stage for Carson City? You bet. Going along? Yes, I'm Jefferson Wells' attorney. I have a very important case to try in Carson. Uh, oh, uh, how long will the run take? Well, we got one stopover. We should make it in 36 hours. Mm-hmm. And you, my good man? Yeah, yeah, me very good man. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, you are going to Carson, too? Yeah, me go up in Lundley. Oh, that's fine. That's excellent. Hey, you have to put your baggage on top. I got more passengers. No, me put them in the seat. Very small, huh? All right, go ahead. Tim, did they send my bags over? Yes, Miss Joan. They're already loaded. You can get in. We'll be leaving in ten minutes. Oh, thank you. Got room for one more? If you don't mind sitting by a pretty girl. I don't care where I sit. What's your name, mister? I gotta have it for the company books. You can call me anything. All right. Anything goes. Cutthroats on the rampage again. I came across the remains of a wagon train. Four dead men, not a sign of any livestock. How did you know it was Greer's work? Well, as I topped the rides, I seen a rider lead a band of men over the hill. I know that Greer gang anywhere. Well, folks, if Greer's killing again, I ain't gonna be responsible for you passengers. We ain't gonna roll. Oh, but Tim, you must make the trip. Father was injured by the Indians, and I've got to get to him. Nothing doing, ma'am. I'm losing plenty, but not making the trip. And if we should run into Greer and his gang, we'd wish we'd met the Indians instead. They're not as bad as Greer. Oh, but listen to me, Tim. Father may be dying, and if I don't get to him, I'll never forgive myself. You accepted my money, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, then it's up to you to carry out your part of the bargain. The lady's right. According to law, you are duty-bound to do that. Never mind the law-binding part. We ain't rolling. Hey, Tim. Uh, who's the young lady in the stage? That's Miss Joan Hale, daughter of Colonel Hale. She's in command of the post over near Carson City. Why did you ask? She's got a lot of spunk. She ought to have. She takes after her dad. He's the most fearless army man in these parts. Well, Tim. Here's that money shipping, and it's got to get on its way to Carson City at once. I'm sorry, Mr. Blake. I can't take that chance with Greer on the loose. The money's there, all right, but Greer's not going to get it. You mean we're going to split it? I always knew you were smart. Now get out to the relay station and meet me there. Howdy, Mr. Blake. Well, Tex Wallace. Gee, I'm sure glad to see you, Tate. I was afraid you weren't going to be here to guard my shipment. <laughs> well, I guess you remember that carrying money through these hills has always been my work. I sent you word I'd be here. Well, that's fine, because I've got to get it on its way to Carson City. Well, that's what I'm aiming to do. Yes, sir. Name your own price, Tate. Oh, well, we'll worry about the price when the work is done. I say we just sit tight till things quiet down. Take the box, Tim, and put it on the stage, and we'll get rolling. 
I want you folks to know you're heading for trouble. No, there won't be any trouble, folks. Now, for heaven's sakes, let's get going. You won't need me up there with you, Tim. I think I'll mosey along behind. Right. Hey, driver, you got room for another passenger? Yeah, I guess you can squeeze in. Well, I'll give you double fare if you can get me to Carson in 24 hours. Mister, if I can get you to Carson in 36 hours, you will be lucky. The name? Jones. Who's going on that stagecoach? It's Lane, and I wonder what he's doing there. $30,000 alongside of him. What do you suppose he's doing there? Rawhide, you ride ahead to the post. Have Colonel Hale send some of his men back with you. Pick us up about Warshaw and hurry. You bet. Hey, Toby. Be a good fellow and take these chains off, will you? We won't leave again. I can't do it, Butch, as long as I'm here alone. Colonel's orders just before he sent the entire troop out to look for Greer and his gang. Where is Greer? Got a tip he's over in Silver City. I wonder how Tex is coming with Lane. Lane will be caught, too. Don't let that worry you. I'm going to talk to those poor devils out in that heat. Sergeant Toby. St. Jed. As you were. Men. It hurts me to see my own troopers in chains, but I have no alternative. We won't cause you any more trouble, sir. If you give me your word of honor not to try to escape, I'll remove your chains in the daytime, but I must replace them at night. Agreed? We do, Colonel. It's our word of honor, sir. And the first man that tries to make a break will know how it feels to have me jump down his gullet. Sergeant, remove their chains. And replace them at sundown. Then you never were in, my good man. Or you'd savvy. <laughs> he would, wouldn't he? You should know. Why don't you show up? You've been jabbering ever since we started. I've a good mind to thrash you, sir. Why? Hey, hurry, what's the matter? I wouldn't do that if I was you. Well, you want some of it too, do you? Not if I've got anything to say about it. All right, get up. Get 
up. Stand over there. Get on back to the stage. What's the trouble here? Why? You tell me, miss. Well, these two men were fighting and... And there's a law, section 618 of the penal code, that most clearly says that... We'll look that, that up later. We'll look it up later. Now, you better get up in the seat and ride with the driver. You know what's good for you. You won't start any more trouble. You better give me your gun, too, mister. Don't you look where you're going. Me looky, you looky too, huh? Go ahead, Tim. Right. Get up. than you now, Mr. Wells. There are laws to put fellows like this chap Greer in jail. The illegality of a cultural to maraud and kill has never been questioned. You've got to catch him first, my learned friend. He's got brains. He's no ordinary bandit. Huh. You seem to be in sympathy with Greer and his ability. I've learned to mind my own business. I find this pretty healthy in these parts. An attorney of note once said there were two courses open through the use of a habeas corpus. Now, in a situation of this kind, with you follow me? Where we go? Excuse me. Take that strong box now. Much obliged.
I won't worry. There's nothing that time won't erase. It's all over now. I won't worry. Still I long for that smile on your face. The days that we spent while together are still fresh in my memory. It's all over now. I won't worry. Still I wish you were back here with me. Oh, it's you. That's a very pretty melody. You like it? Yes, I do. Well, yeah, that's a new one. I thought I'd just practice up a little bit. The summer's hot and I've waited. My waiting has all been in vain. It's all over now. I won't worry. And with you, my poor heart will remain. It's all over now. I won't worry, though years have passed by and I'm old, it's never too late, I won't worry, and my love for you never grows cold. I am worried, Tex. About what? I'm not quite sure, but did you notice that hard-looking fellow at the counter? Yes, I did. Well, he and the stranger who was knocked off the stagecoach are up to something. They were watching every move you made as you were leaving the room. You'd better be careful. Aren't you imagining things, Miss Jones? Uh, you'd better go get some sleep. We're pulling out pretty early in the morning. But the strong box, isn't it dangerous? Don't you worry none about the strong box. I have the money here to where it'll be quite safe. <laughs> Trouble, Tex. I caught this hombre, but his pal got away. He took the strong box with him. Where did he take it? I don't know. Hang on to him, Tim. When we get into Carson, we'll turn him over to the sheriff. Where'd you come from, Rawhide? I learned that every soldier at the post left on a tip that Greer was in the south. So I doubled back to warn you. I think it's a trap. Greer's after the money, all right. Somebody just stole the strong box that carried the money. What? I think it was one of Greer's men. Then with the money gone, Greer won't bother us anymore. Now that's where you're wrong, Rawhide. They'll be after us now more than ever. Why? The gentleman that took the box will soon find out.
There was nothing in the box. Tex Wallace still has that money in the coach. You sure you're on the square about this? Sure. I tell you, there was nothing in the box but rocks. You'll get that money. But you're going with us. another person to that of your own person is a felony. The penalty... No, you've been a smart man. You said you'd like to learn from book, huh? <laughs> Why, my good man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe me, good man. Me tell him you that before. Ah. Yeah, I know him a mile away. It's Greer. Yeah, it looks like he's got us bottled up. Yeah, we can't turn around here, so there's only one thing left to do. We'll try to charge him. Maybe we can outrun him. Get to a place where we can stand them off. Folks, Greer's got a trail block. We've got to make a run for it. Are you sure that's Greer? No, well, it's him, all right. Oh, please don't, Tex. You can save everyone by surrendering. We've only one chance. If we can crash them before they realize our move, we've got them beat. All right, Tim. Drive them through. Get up! Make a stand here. Here, use this gun and stay back. Stay back in the cave, Mr. Wells. If you want to help us, Use it on Greer's men. If you don't, you might use it on yourself. You're gonna shoot it out, Cliff. Sneak up and see how it works.
Lend me a horse and I'll try to break through. What are you trying to do? Get back to Greer? No. I was gunning for Greer. That's why I deserted the army. Well, I'll take your word for it, Lane. It's your name, ain't it? Yeah. All right. I'll give you the chance that you won't. It's only one chance in a hundred that you'll make it. Take Will Hyde's horse. They desert again. They'd be court-martialed immediately. Well, you'd better call in your guard, Colonel, because I'm taking them with me. Very well, my boy. Tell Sergeant Toby to report to you for duty. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, tell the deserters the fastest horses are in the park are out. I'll return your prisoners, Colonel.
Butch, I knew if you and the boys were still there, you wouldn't fail me. But I guess we're in for it just the same. I think I'll have something to say about that. Take charge of him, boys. I'm glad you made it safely. Oh, thanks, Joan. I hope you won't think that I was interfering in your affairs, but last night I took your money. Well, what do you mean? Well, I knew you kept it in your saddlebags, and I took them and hid them. You'll find them at the relay station. Well, it was nice of you to think of me. <laughs> Aren't you worried about the money? Well, I... <laughs> Open the bag. You see, Joan, Charlie and I always work together on these jobs. Don't we, Charlie? All the time you send me, Hexie, Charlie. Yeah.